And just list used to be big. Do you mm -hmm. see it? Because you work with a lot of countries. Do you see it still working in some areas or everybody spools out? Maybe human error. People are just knuckleheads clicking around that don't know what they're doing. Can you name five platforms to generate leads in 2021? Joseph or Joe? Joe. Joe. So you hate of being called marketer, but you're a marketer. Why would marketer hate being called marketer? I don't know if I'd say I hate it. It's just become kind of uh, people in our industry, in the contracting industry, have had bad, horrible experiences with marketers. And the barrier to entry of calling yourself an, on, uh, an entrepreneur or a marketer is like so low. So you have a lot of marketers who go through like a, a training program and then they you know, try to figure out who they want to target. They'll go after roofers, go after contractors and really do a lot of harm. So if I don't, you're, if you're I don't want to be lumped into that crowd. What's your business model? So if you're not a marketer, you're a trainer, how do you make money? We teach roofing companies how to fish. We don't sell them the fish. We don't sell them leads. We don't generate ads and leads for you. We train you as a roofing company on how to create content, how to run ads, how to build a marketing machine inside your business. So roofing companies pay us to train them on that process. As a person who have seen businesses kind of like from the distance, who do you see the most successful? Like you're not in business obviously, but you, you work with the businesses. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it depends on what the owner wants, but I would say I think the five to $10 million range is where the owner uh, has, has a, a good enough team where they're not working 16 hours a day and they, they're making money. And okay. it's, it's happy medium. It's in control. I think once you get beyond that, you know, they tend to lose control. You need to develop different skill sets. Um, that's not necessarily what a lot of owners really want, even if they think they do. So we've got clients that are at seven, eight million and they're, they're very happy there. Yeah. Where do you see most trouble in this business? Oh, well, certainly startup. There's always challenges there. I, I guess probably if you, especially in the storm restoration industry, when you're growing so quickly, like you mentioned before, uh, it's just, it's all about selling and there's not a, enough processes to back that up to fulfill the work and everything. Um, so I think that's tough, but I think, the first couple million where the owner is doing everything and it's just so stressful and it's so, we've all been there and it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough to get over that, that hurdle. Storm chasing or residential retail for business model? Like if you would open a business today. Residential retail. Residential retail. Absolutely. Why? As opposed to storm chasing? Yeah. You get to build a local brand. You get to be home with your family. You're, you get to hire a local team um, and not burn them out. Uh, that's, I, yeah, I, 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 think I, would never... I, I think I asked this question last time I met you. Have you, how many times have you been tempted to open a roofing business? And why don't you yet? Didn't you yet? So the, I've got the website. It's, it's ranking in Google. <laughs> so in yours. Jersey. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. Next year. You're going to be in the roofing business. Maybe. <laughs> what's what's, I, I what's wanted, holding so you back? I wanted to this year. It was on my list this year. And I evaluated it over the winter. And... Um, it's like there's still work to be done at our company, a lot, a lot of work to be done to build out the team and processes. And I don't want to chase a shiny object. Uh, we have a great business. We're growing. We're building our team. And, and I want to focus on that um, until we have a team in place where I can give some, at least some focus to a roofing company. So well, that's exciting. So you are actually thinking, considering <clears throat> to open a roofing business. Yeah, and it's not just about making money. It is about diversifying. It's also about building something local. Like our business right now is national, which is awesome here in Oklahoma, which is great. I really want to build something local, be able to um, build something in the community, build something where, you know, maybe my kids can someday, even if they're just teenagers learning leadership and learning hard work, and maybe their friends can work there as well and, and really just have something local. Um, that's something I really want to do. So Love it. I think I think I will. Let's let's talk about this. Uh, what what is dad in marketing? Like completely dad. Used to work, doesn't work anymore. Don't waste <laughs> your time. Name a few things. Being too busy to do marketing, you're like as a company and saying, I just want to pay XYZ company to generate a whole bunch of leads for me. That it can work, but it's really, really it's it's an uphill battle. Okay. 
because you don't want to. Can you name a couple platforms like that? Is that like that roofers should not be wasting their time on? As far as active platforms, like they they honestly all work. Like Facebook works, LinkedIn works. I know that guys are doing things on TikTok. That's not really my game. That yeah. works. YouTube, LinkedIn, they all work if you if you work. Have you, them. Have you ever have roofers killing it on house dot com? Um, no, we did work with a pool and uh, landscape design company back in the back of several years ago. That's that different. did really well. Yes, um, that's different. What about Yelp? Do you see any roofers killing it on Yelp? It's funny you mentioned California. We have a couple clients in uh, in Los Angeles that do really well and invest a ton of advertising dollars on Yelp. And I was surprised to hear that, but I guess it's big in California, yeah. How many contractors do you see that are killing it on Angel's List and Home Advisor these days? My like, An- Angel's List used to be big. Do you mm-hmm. see, it, because you work with a lot of contractors, do you see it still working in some areas or everybody's pulled out? I think most people pulled out. The, my local plumber back in New Jersey kills it on Angie's list. He's at the top. He's got like 600 five-star reviews. Um, he's probably one of the only ones I know. So everybody's out. How about Thumbtacks? Thumbtack or Porch.com? Do that, any Por- of those? Is Por- I didn't know Porch is still around. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, I think they partner up with uh, iRoofing or something like that. They're, they're, they're still oh, around. Oh, right, right, right. They're right. still around. Okay. But- um, I've heard pretty good things about Thumbtack. Um, I, you know, I've heard people do well with HomeAdvisor. It's sure. about... But what's the percentage? Like how many in your experience? Like if you work... Oh, with like less than five maybe? Less than five yeah. percent? Yeah, yeah. How about platforms like Modernize? And there's a few more like, you know, big giant companies the, that everybody knows, everybody hears advertising like uh, Build Zoom. Mm-hmm. Any success stories there that you hear? No. I'm not saying there aren't any. I just, I, I don't... No, there's so many of those aggregator sites. Um, no, Just, we hear the noise, we hear the pitch, but we never hear success stories. Right, Isn't right. weird? <laughs> yeah. And we talk with the roofers. It's not like we're not looking. Like I think, guys, what, what you need to understand that we're not always looking for the cash. We're not looking for the hate. We're really trying, like guys like me and you, we're trying to find what works, what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons I'm asking you these questions because I don't want it to be my experience. I want to go and find mm-hmm. out what works. And... You're a great example of a guy who goes teaches like, you know, like when we see a guy killing in California on Yelp, we mm-hmm. say, hey, it works in California. Right. But then when you don't know anybody's killing on any plasma, you're like, does it even work? Right. What's your take on telemarketing? Call calls. Um, I don't do it personally. I, I, I guess it can work. I don't really know much about that side of the industry. Any of your clients using it? Oh, yeah, I would say at least probably maybe a third, maybe. After the store? Um, <laughs> yeah, and then I guess ongoing. But why do you need call calls after the store? It's already, you already have leads. It's already yeah, I mean, my, my philosophy and what we train on is that you should be generating customers through your brand and not, you know, going out and just like being a commodity in your market. So it's not something that, that I am very familiar with, but. I think it's working with decreasing effectiveness, if that makes sense. Can you name five platforms to generate leads in 2021, like by building your brand on them? Top five. Uh, well, your website's going to be your home base. Like okay. people are going to go check you out. Uh, Google Google reviews are like that's becoming more and so more. Google my business. Google my business. Uh, Google Guarantee, local service ads in many, most markets are still so working well. top three well. is Google products. All right, well, I'm not going in, in order here. But, uh, <laughs> but still. Like, okay. That's um, what you mean. Yeah, Facebook for sure. Facebook. And, man, I got one left. I mean, I got to say YouTube. I mean, we're on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Uh, where do you see Facebook is going? Uh, early on, <clears throat> it was cheap leads, cheap results. Then a lot of complaints came in. I mean, they got their marketing dollars. They started increasing, raising. Now everybody's complaining it doesn't work anymore. Does it still work? What, what do you have to do to make it work on Facebook? You've got to get people to know who you are before you're going out there and putting out offers. So like if I put out an offer for a free estimate or a free inspection to a cold audience of people who have no idea who I am, I'll generate a quantity of leads, but they're not. it's still going to be an uphill battle they have no idea who I am. Mm-hmm. So to win, you've got to get build your brand, just like any other form of marketing. 
get people to know who you are, build some value, get people to understand and appreciate that value. And then you put an offer out to people who have already engaged with your brand and you're going to generate those warm leads. So that's what works. How do you explain all those um, bad Facebook leads where you run a campaign, people call you, you call them immediately and they don't know who you are? It happens all the time. Why? why and I hate, to, I hate to admit it, but it's the truth. Like, but why? With, like, with good campaign, with bad campaigns, with good campaigns. Why does it happen? There's maybe human error. People are just knuckleheads clicking around that don't know what they're doing. Um, there's people that have claimed that Facebook has, you know, bots that kind of do that. I don't really know. And it's really weird because it's mainly happening with the Facebook. It does not, it does not happen with the Google as much. Like when people come to you and click on you on Google, mm -hmm. it's usually pretty bad, like much better. But mm -hmm. so no explanation. Yeah, it, bots. I, I yeah. I mean the human just, error and like just like the reviews. Like everybody's chasing the. Don't chase Facebook views. It's not real views. Like those three second views, it's pretty much a scroll. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it, it's, it's, it's the same would be as uh, how many people watch on YouTube thumbnail. Just because you've seen it, like you click right. it, you did not watch it. But that's what Facebook counts. That's what they sell, sell you on, yeah. So, so it, like, it's, it's almost like fake it before you make it. Yeah, like with our clients, like they'll, they might report back, hey, we got 26 leads this week. And that doesn't, excite us anymore because it's like all right well how many of those did you contact and set new appointments because it's the quality and on 26 what would the number be i mean it, it depends on on their on how quickly we're getting back to them on how, how quality they'll be how many they'll be as far as like those the, yeah the, kind of the, true conversions true leads oh um it, i mean it depends i don't know two-thirds what, at least what was the cost 80? per lead on facebook these days uh Anywhere between like say thirty and ninety bucks. And you're talking about appointments or those dead leads? Uh, those would be leads. If you're running lead generation campaigns, there's eleven different types of campaigns you can run. So, so lead like, generation thirty to ninety. That's a good result. It depends on how much brand awareness you're doing. Depends on your, uh, your messaging. A lot of factors, but somewhere in there. Okay. But more important would be cost per appointment, cost per contract. What what is good cost per appointment these days? We got to reverse engineer that that you know what's your what's your conversion ratio from your contract uh, from appointment to contract. So if you're at a you know forty percent closing rate, um, so in order to get four contracts, you need ten appointments. So what are you willing to pay for an appointment to get you know? To what's get what's good in your opinion for roofing? Uh, you're gonna be a roofing business owner. You need to know yeah. That. So doing the math. I don't know what I pay 500 bucks, 250, 500 bucks. Depends on the size of the roof. It's a $15,000 roof. Is it a hundred thousand dollar cedar roof? Like what is it? So I think, I think a business owner should categorize, you know, is it 20 square roof? Is it specialty? Is it commercial? What is that? Well, you're going to go after average because you don't know. You don't know who's going to call you. Leads are leads. If, if you're strategic about your marketing, you can somewhat, you can dial that in a little bit more. Share a few mistakes that contractors make in marketing, like almost all of them. Not understanding it, um, not understanding how it works, wanting to pay someone to do it for them. Throw and, money at the problem here. But, exactly. There. So if I outsource my bookkeeping and I have no idea about the financial numbers of my business, I'm gonna, if I'm not getting taken advantage of, I might feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. I'm not gonna know if that's a good service or not. It's the same with marketing. Like you've gotta not be an, you don't have to be an expert as an owner, but you've gotta understand the basics. And that's like the foundational thing. That really, it really is. Anything else? Any other mistakes? Generating leads from people who have no idea who you are, because you gotta think about that. And you know, people like, Owners will complain about leads if they're cold. That's just the nature of leads, right? You got to work them. You know, some are going to be bad, some are going to be good. But if you're building your brand and getting people to know who you are, then that's that's how you win. So you said you want to start a roofing business. What marketing budget are you going to have for it? And what do you think a roofing a good roofing marketing budget is? Um, in a stable or just like kind of maintaining would be like 5%. Like if you want to grow, maybe 10%. Um, but it depends how creative you are. Uh, you know, at the beginning to get to a million, 
you don't really need a ton of marketing. Um, sure. You can you can build a million dollars worth of business just from scrolling through your phone and you know contacting your your contacts. Sure. Um, more you know more or less. Sure. Uh, to grow beyond that, yeah, I mean five to ten percent. Five ten percent. Okay. How many do you think are willing to spend that in your experience? How many are willing to spend that? Very few. But those, I mean, who, if, but those get, who do, they are successful. I get excited if someone's spending five. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Sure. No, I get it. I, I want to hear mostly, That's mostly a retail contractor, locally focused. It's got a brand, uh, in, in my experience anyway. Yeah. What's your favorite media as a user and as a marketer? Like maybe it's too different, maybe it's the same. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love podcasts. I run a lot, so I listen to podcasts a lot. Um, as a producer, I love, I like, I like my live stream videos, um, get engagement from people. You get to, you get to, uh, whether it's live in person or live on Facebook, you can see like where people are at in terms of the questions that they're asking. Mm -hmm. So I can try to meet them where they're at. So I like the live stuff. So Facebook live and podcast. Mm -hmm. Give one advice to a brand new roofer, someone who just started a business yesterday. Man, keep it simple. Like, I think we as humans tend to overcomplicate everything. Like, just pick one service and just focus on building a process around that and just market that. Sell a million dollars of one service and build processes and then go from there. Don't try to do too much. The class was amazing. Guys, do you have any questions for this guy? Anyone? I'll ask it for you. I have a question. Sure. Do you see any value in like uh, email marketing, like Constant Contact or Mailchimp? Mm -hmm. Email marketing. Love that question. Email marketing. So roofing is a high consideration purchase. If I inquire on your roofing company's website today, maybe I'm looking for information. Maybe I'm looking for pricing. I might not make a decision for another six months, right? Um, maybe I'm busy, maybe I need to get my money in order, maybe I'm not sure if I need the service. So don't, don't ignore me just because I don't want to give you money today. So stay in touch with people. Email marketing, having a monthly like newsletter, that's great. Just staying top of mind. Love they it. might not even read it, but they're seeing your name in their inbox on a monthly basis. Love it. Top just of mind. Maybe, maybe don't be annoying. Yes, the more you annoy them, the, that's where they might unsubscribe but if it's quarterly or news releases or something important yeah or not even about roofing just about your local community hey sure. here's a new restaurant that opened here's this here's a highlight of one of our clients I like that. anything else guys any other questions what about like postcards like direct mail yeah. postcards direct mail and postcards i think they can work really well uh you should track everything so i would have a unique url on your postcard a unique tracking phone number so you can track what you're getting from that. The unique URL can go to a landing page, uh, and then you can go see, hey, we got 89 visits to this landing page. The only place where that URL is is on the postcard. Uh, same with the tracking phone number. Um, yeah, I mean, don't, don't do it without tracking and be consistent. You'll see guys that are like, oh, I sent out 10,000 postcards and I didn't get anything. Well, it's more about sending out 1,000 you know, every couple months and being consistent with it. Because again, you don't know when people are going to need your service. Well, Joe, it was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for coming to the class, teaching guys. And I'll see you next time. All right. Thanks. Brother. Thank you, guys. It was awesome. <laughs>